let's, I guess, first go into what, what happened, remind people what happened with, with Michael Brown and uh, the officer, Darren Wilson, because I think a lot of people, when they recall the Ferguson event, all they remember is white cop killed a young black man who held his hands up and said, don't shoot. Um, so, you know, the, the pro you call this a poetic truth, Shelby, uh, can you explain what you mean by that? And, uh, and, and then can we remind people what was actually found in the department of justice investigation? A poetic truth is the, is the version of an event that you concoct, um, in order to pursue power. And you use poetic license to bend reality, to shape it. So Michael Brown was not just a kid who on a hot afternoon lost his temper, attacked a policeman and, and ended up being shot. Um, Michael Brown is a black man, representative of blacks all over the country, all throughout American history who have been uh, lynched and shot and murdered uh, by by racist uh, overseers, policemen, and, and so forth. So poetically, Michael Brown's death is a sort of image of this history and in that sense sort of validates or proves that this history is still with us today. We're still a society that is capable of murdering a, a black teenager uh, for no other reason than the fact than the fact that he's that he's black. So uh, that is that's what, uh, so what we mean by by poetic truth. Um, and so there's a in these kind of events, almost instantly there's a competition between the poetic truth that we start to invent right away and reality, what really in fact, what really in fact happened. So you see the character Shahid in the film that is, is close to the family. He's the one who invented hands up, don't shoot. Um, again, an image of, of victimization uh, at the hands of racism. Uh, and he, he was one of the, the sort of architects of this poetic truth that why do this? Why go to, to all the, the, the trouble to do to in, reinvent in this way? Because the in America today, blacks at any rate perceive their victimization to be their power. It gives them a moral authority in American life to push, to demand things, to argue for their own entitlement to to be recognized. So our victimization is in that odd sense precious to us. It stops, if it weren't for that, we would be invisible completely. Um, but so, so what what this what they're doing in the in the again the poetic truth saves our self-esteem. Here we are again and poor boys is shot uh, by a white uh, policeman, and and uh, it's, it's like 1932 in Mississippi, uh, and uh, the beat goes on. America owes us, uh, and then we have the the so we have the the dynamic that just sort of then spins out. Uh, Eric Holder, the Attorney General, Barack Obama, the President come into Ferguson. President of the United States sends his, his envoy, uh, Eric Holder, Attorney General, to, in, to investigate because they want the poetic truth to be the, the, the truth that prevails because that's where the power is. If blacks have been victimized, then that's power. They can bring it back, use it in a political context. Um, Whereas in Chicago, uh, 300 miles up the road, 
again, thousands of blacks shot every year, teenagers, by other black teenagers. The president's not interested. He never visits. Uh, the attorney general, you can't get his attention um, because there's no power there. The minute there's power there, then the poetry begins. Um, so am I remembering correctly that Eric Holder did not meet with the white mayor of Ferguson, but met with the black mayors of all the surrounding towns? That's right. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> talk about yeah. a naked, a naked <laughs> yeah. power move. That was it. Yeah. So to remind people here, Eric Holder came into Ferguson saying, you know, he's coming as the attorney general, but he's, quote, also coming as a black man. And combined with not meeting with the white mayor of Ferguson, all of that amounted to a signal that he was significantly biased towards finding the cop to be guilty of something. And even still, when he ended up releasing two different um, Justice Department reports, the one that pertained specifically to the Michael Brown case, you know, exonerated Darren Wilson because, you know, on the basis of evidence, even coming into it biased against him was unable to, you know, corroborate any witness testimony to the effect that Michael Brown had his hands up or was killed execution style. And the, the witness testimony overwhelmingly corroborated the, the cop's account wherein Michael Brown punched him, tried to reach his gun, overpowered him, um, initially began to run away, but then turned around and charged the cop uh, through you know, two series of bullets, almost unfazed, and then finally went down. Um, so it, it corroborated the basic picture of a cop trying to make an arrest and fearing for his life and only shooting because he, he, he rationally feared for his life. Uh, and many people don't remember the Ferguson incident that way. They remember what it felt like initially to, to read hands up, don't shoot. And it seems like a lot of these cases end up going that way. There's an initial picture surrounded by uncertainty, and it could go either way. But all the incentives in the media, especially you know outside of Fox News, all the incentives in the media are to take the racism angle, to uh, look at all the evidence that confirms the racism angle and ignore any evidence that could possibly exonerate the cop. And it's happened over and over again since then. 